Hello everyone, welcome to Less Than 3, or Heart, or Left Arrow 3, depending on how you want to read it. I don't know, on the original site uh, where I got it from, it was called this heart symbol, and but when I downloaded it, the actual folder was called Less Than 3, so I guess it's meant to be both. It's probably a pun or something, I don't know, we'll see when I play the game. Because I think it involves three people. But anyway, this is a small adventure game from Ben Chandler. It is totally free. The link will be in the description. And here is the plot. Othello, Vanny, and Edmi have finally reached the long-forgotten treasure room of the Emperor Kamal. Loaded with relics, it seems they have finally obtained the goal they've been chasing. Or have they? That's it, so let's jump in. As always, wonderful art. Well, children, will you look at that? The treasure room lays before us, untouched, for perhaps decades. All this treasure! Emperor Kamal must have been a very greedy man. Greed? No. This wasn't collected for wealth alone. These are trophies, remnants of adventures he and the companions of the Whirling Blade had during his reign. All of these things tell a story. They are mementos of his quests. You know, I've read about such treasures in many books, and dreamed of such sights. But now that I can see it for myself, it's so breathtaking. To think that I'm actually standing here with my own two feet, where no man has stood for decades. And here, the most valuable treasure of them all, the gem the Emperor plucked from the eye of the beast of the Highland Pit with his own hand. <clears throat> with his own hand. The Jewel of Kamal. I have to say, I never dared to imagine that I'd see it with my own eyes. Wait, you're telling me this is a creature's eye? Eye. He called upon ancient... <laughs> is that a pun? I, I. he called upon ancient magics and turned the beast into crystal, taking an eye as a souvenir before smashing it into fragments with a mighty bolt of lightning. It was the last time he ever ventured out of his palace. Even so, while none of these other relics can match its worth, every piece in this room has some equally amazing past. Strange. You'd think there would be more tales of his exploits. Oh, there are. It's just that few are interested in such things these days. How thrilling! Really, though, children, the, the jewel is our reason for being here. History is nice and all, but this jewel, this is real wealth, beyond any knowledge. You're clearly getting far too excited about this old junk, Othello. I don't recall you drooling quite that much when admiring my treasures. <laughs> you know I remain in awe of your hidden delights, Edmi. Hey, what happened? What's that over what's that over the door? Strange. Allow me to inspect it closer. I think we're trapped. Hmm, it seems to be some sort of magical barrier. Picking up the Jewel of Kamal must have triggered it. We are, it seems, trapped in here. Serves you right for snatching it up so hungrily. There must be a way to disable such a thing, surely. Those two runes in the center of the room look suspicious. Maybe they hold the key? I shall examine this barrier to see if I can learn anything about the nature of the magic. See if you can figure out anything with those runes, will you? Okay, here we go. God, it's amazing how much detail Ben Chandler can pack into such a low-resolution game. I don't remember exactly what the original resolution of the game is, but it is minuscule. It's such a small amount of pixels. And yet there's so much detail. Alright, so we've got a couple of runes here. <laughs> Which look like the runes that, or look like the symbols that make up the name of the game. The left arrow and the three. Or less than, or when put together, heart. Alright, let's take a look at these treasures. Actually, let's save it. There we go. 
Crossbow, what is the story behind you? Haha, <laughs> yes! It's the Giant Slayer Crossbow. Oh, oh, I skipped it. How I wish I had the strength to use it. Ah, what did he say? If that's not the most stylish weapon ever, then I'll sell my collection of... Begarth carvings. I wish I had the strength to use it. He doesn't have the strength to use that? It doesn't look particularly large. Well, apparently that thing was used to kill a giant. Crystal Globe. It's one of the light orbs of Candelo. They only hold their light for ten years. This one must have lost its power long ago. A shell. The only thing more disgusting, that slimy... That's... wait. Oh, that's a misspell. Oops. The only thing more disgusting than slimy sea creatures are dead sea creatures. Why anyone would want to make a horn out of one is beyond me. Trident. It's probably a remnant from when Kamal was captured by slavers and forced to fight gladiators. Apparently, he never discussed it very much, so nobody really knew much about what happened during that time. Hmm. Horn. The horn of the Kurlak beast, turned into a horn for calls in battle or hunting. These are fairly common, although this is a particularly nice example. Man, there's so much stuff in this room. I love it. Gauntlet. It's a gauntlet for the training of war falcons. This stops their sharp talons harming the wearer. Apparently Kamal was given a flock of these falcons by the Parkian King. Gear. A gear from the machinery of the Bloodstone Mines in western Tuskia. This was given to Kamal by the chief engineer when he cleared it of lava trolls. It holds little monetary value, but it represents an event that grew the region's economy enormously. Lava trolls! Those sound dangerous! Idol. It's an idol of the cat god Monotomy. Monotomy. It looks to be carved from pure black shale. Instrument. It's a harp oud, or something like that. I never did get the reason for these being built. Still, this is a beautiful example of the instrument. It's a little strange to see such a plain-looking sack in a room full of such exotic things. That is strange. Can you pick that up? Is there anything in it? I can't seem to get the knot undone by hand. Whoever tied this up wanted it to stay tied up. Hmm. Alright, so I started from here, went left, and went down. Let me move away. Let's go to the right of the door. Torch. I suppose this was used to provide light before they got the lamp over there. It's much more pleasant to have the lamp than some smoky hot torch. Vase. It looks like an authentic Kresna vase. That must mean that Kamal visited the Kresnas at some point. Strange. I never recall the tales mentioning any such visit. Painting. It's a scene that depicts Kamal slaying the demon Barak. The colors and sense of movement in this painting are breathtaking. Pan flute. Kamal was well known for his love of pan flute music. He kept musicians in his palace at all times, apparently. Dreamcatcher. I think the shaman Eloise, the raven, used this to pull Kamal out of the magical coma he was poisoned into when he traveled to an alternate plane. She saved his life with this. Wait, so he was... He was in a magical coma when he traveled to an alternate plane. Well, this person has been through a lot of adventures, huh? Killed lava trolls and visited a million different places and was in a magical coma. Torch painting... Statue. It's a pagan statue of some sort. Sadly, I don't know exactly which tribe it belongs to. I really should further my pagan studies. Alright, what's over here? Dreamcatcher, Axe. I've read about this. The barbarian Kron used it in his crusade against the entire Wailing Coast. Only to be defeated by Emperor Kamal, of course. Hide. Strange. I don't recognize the beast this comes from. 
I'm better at, at identifying man-made things than natural ones, I guess. Sword. The Greatsword of Kalum. Apparently, this thing can slice through full plate armor. Of course, you need the strength of a giant to pick it up and swing it around without chopping your own leg off. <laughs> yeah, that looks heavy. Lamp. This looks like a Forte lamp carved from the trees of the Forte forest. The light comes from a Fey stone, meaning it will never run out. This surely would have been a gift from the Queen of the Willowin Pagans. Okay, what else? Painting. It depicts Kamal's palace in the glory days of the Empire. It has gone to ruin quite a bit since then. Hmm, that's a shame. Dagger. I recognize this, I think. Something about a dagger of dispelling, only usable by those who rebel against lawfulness and embrace chaos. If I could pick it up, I could probably get a better idea of what it does. Should I pick it up? Uh, let's read everything else first. Let's examine everything else first. Stand. The tree spirits of the great northern forests use these for their herb preparing rituals. Oh, it looks like there's a... Is that a dagger on the ground? Yeah, there's a dagger on the ground. Someone left a small dagger on the ground here. Either they were in a hurry or there's a reason for it being there. Hmm. Scroll. The peace treaty signed by Emperor Kamal and High Priestess Yasmin. One of the most historically significant treaties of the last century. Plant? It's a Gintor flower. I thought these were all extinct. The smell of it gi the smell it gives off is sweet, like cinnamon and sugar and the smell of freshly fallen rain. No wonder they were so sought after for perfume. Ice crystal. There seems to be something in the middle of it. It must be magical if it has kept it frozen for all this time. Altar. It looks like a Nari altar. I'm not sure whether Kamal ever joined their faith, but he was considered a strong ally of theirs. Oh, look at that. That chest is so cute. It's tiny. It's an oak chest. The markings on it aren't familiar. I wonder where it could have come from. Mirror. A still mirror. These only reflect non-sentient... Things. Huh, interesting. Apparently Kamal used this to convince the spirit of Guardius that he didn't actually exist, thus causing him to disappear. <laughs> that is really cool. Alright, I think that's everything I've looked at as far as the items on the wall. Yeah, I think that's it. Alright, let's look at the stuff down here. Rune. These runes must be magical to be glowing like this. I wonder how someone writes a glowing rune onto the floor. Hmm. Oops. Alright, let me see if I can open this chest. I can't seem to open it. Alright, let me see if I can pick up this dagger. I should investigate these runes, see if I can disable the barrier before I go touching anything else. Okay. What if you touch the rune? Hey. I feel a bit tingly. Hmm. What about this one? Same thing, feel a bit tingly. Oh yeah, I can examine myself. This isn't the time for self-examination. Uh, what about Edmi? It's Edmi, the mage. We haven't been traveling together very long. I'd like to get to know her a bit better. I bet you would, darling. Uh, was he talking out loud? Apparently he was saying that out loud. Uh, Vanny. She's a cleric, and we've been traveling together for about three years now. Alright, have you discovered anything about the force field keeping us in here, Edmi? Edmi? Oh, damn it, I skipped it. I'm sure she'd be delighted to assist someone for once, and could probably spare half a minute from praying to lend a hand. Uh, who are you talking about? Ah, oh, right, never mind then. Okay, let me see if I can do that again, because I accidentally skipped it. I'm trying to concentrate, child. Ask the cleric if you need any help, will you? Okay. Any ideas what to do? You're the bard. You ought to be the one who has heard of something like this before. I'm a cleric. What am I supposed to know about about it? 
Ask Edme, she understands arcane magic better than I do. Hmm. Well, I can't have her step on one of the glowing runes on the floor. That way, we both can feel tingly. Let's do that. What is that supposed to do? I'm not exactly sure, but there are two of them, and I can't step on both at the same time. Fine. Hey, I feel a bit weird. Just stand on that spot, okay? Here we go. Since this makes the heart symbol, is this going to, like, join us together or something? Are we going to mind meld? I don't know. Let's, uh, let me save it first. Let's try it. Well, you are clever children. Ooh, it worked. Very interesting. The barrier has gone. Who would have thought that the cute little bard would have a brain in his head as well? <laughs> well, fuck you too. Allow me to make certain that the barrier is completely disabled. Well, there we are. The mystery is solved. <laughs> ah, it appears that the runes will require a constant presence upon them in order to function. Then we're stuck in here? Oh, damn it, I skipped it. Yeah. Edme, we're still stuck in here. She... She appears to be abandoning us. Apparently she decided that the Jewel of Kamal was more important than us. I always knew she was a selfish, greedy witch. I bet she was using us all along. But she said I was cute. I skipped it again. Yes, but I don't imagine them. Uh, I don't abandon them behind magical barriers either. What does it matter anyway? We're stuck in here, Othello. We'll find another way out. If such a thing even exists. The items in this room, many of them possess their own powers. There must be something in here that can that can assist us. Hmm. I have no idea about any of these things. And Vanny clearly never figured anything out about the barrier. I shall examine this barrier myself then. Perhaps it, perhaps I can learn something of its nature that the witch could not. Hmm. Okay, so I need to use the items in this room to help me get out. Alright, let's pick up this dagger first. An interesting looking dagger. What's that for? Oh, well, I thought it might help us get out of here somehow. A little dagger? Yeah, well, it might have some special properties. These are all powerful artifacts, after all. The witch didn't seem very impressed with anything other than the jewel. Well, it's certainly worth more gold than any of the rest of these things. I still can't believe she left us trapped in here. I don't see how it is so hard to accept. She was using us to get what she wanted. Now she has what she wants, and even better, we're stuck in here and can't interfere with her plans. I'm sure we would have figured it out earlier if she was just using us. It would have been more obvious. Oh, come on, Othello. You followed her around like a good little puppy, and she knew it. Why do you think she wore such a revealing robe? It takes more than a revealing robe to distract me, thank you very much. I guess that explains why she wiggled her hips about so much when casting spells. Don't, pr don't pretend you didn't notice. I... well... What about your tunic? This is the garment I am required to wear by my order, Othello. And if it upsets you, then you're free to look elsewhere. I'll get back to looking at this dagger, shall I? Probably for the best. What about this ice crystal? That's very cold to the touch. I wonder how it has stayed frozen in here. Must be something magical inside. Hmm. I wonder if I could break it, but that seems wrong to break something in here, though. What about the chest? I can't seem to open it. You know what? Um, well, let me examine this. Oh, whoa, what? Damage 1 to 4, speed 1? Is this a role-playing game? <laughs> Steel dagger. Effectively a knife with a double-edged blade, steel daggers are the favorite weapon of thieves, as well as being useful backup weapons for fighters and mages. 
Uh, not very useful for sword fighting. Uh, they still can kill efficiently in the hands of the right person and are easy to conceal. Am I actually going to have to fight? I don't know. Let me try the... I can't get this open, so let me try to cut the sack. There we go. What are you doing now? Well, I want to know, wanted to know what was inside the sack, and I couldn't undo the knot by hand. Find anything interesting? It was full of sand, but in amongst the sand was this knife. I wonder why anybody would store a knife in a sack full of sand. Could be to hide it, or to stop an enchantment on it from causing damage. That's a good point. How are you going with that barrier? I think I might have figured out where the enchantment comes from. See these patterns? If you take them as a small part of a larger piece, then it resembles the patterns found on Timpu monasteries. We stayed a couple of days in one nearly a year ago, remember? Hey, you're right. I'm impressed you managed to pick where the pattern is from. I might not wiggle my bum as much as Edmi did for you, but I'm not completely without purpose. I just wish I could put this information to some use. Hmm. Well, perhaps this knife I found might help. I'm not sure how a knife will help us, but I suppose it's worth a shot. I'll take a look at it and see if it can help us. That would be rather rude. Oh, I saw the knife selected. I just tried to attack her. <laughs> Let me put that down. All right, let's take a look at the knife. Is this... No, that's the old one. Uh, this. Whoa, that is fancy. Tongue of Flame. 2-6 to six damage, speed 1, special, plus 1 fire damage. Bearing the runes of Master... This text is barely readable in some points. Uh, bearing the runes of Master Blacksmith and Enchanter... What does it say? Hrom Fullen? This dagger is forged from tempered steel and enchanted with fiery magic. This weapon was made for the illusionist Tele Benthor, and was famously carried and used by him during his betrayal and killing of the King of Growth. It is said that Ben Thor unsuccessfully tried to trick Emperor Kamal, resulting in a duel between the two and the illusionist's death. Hmm. So maybe it was kept in sand to protect it from... causing stuff to catch on fire? So I'm assuming this thing can generate heat, since it is, after all, a sort of fire. And... What can you do with heat? Melt ice. What is this? An ice crystal. Bingo! Fire melts ice, and inside, another knife. Why are there so many knives? A dagger surrounded by ice? How strange. Obviously, there's some sort of cold enchantment on it. I'll have a closer look at it. How are you going with that barrier? Not so well. I'm sure there's something I'm not remembering, but I can't put my finger on what it is. Gah, I'm useless at magic like this. Magic like this? Yeah, arcane magic. It's nothing at all like the magic I use. Mine is granted by a god. This is... This is just bending the rules of the universe. No matter how much I look at it, I can't figure it out. Maybe you're thinking about it wrong? I don't know how else to think about it. This arcane magic, it's... It's all trickery and deception. Unlike the powers I draw on, these magic... These magics merely alter things in nature to suit themselves. There's no real power here, just lies that I can't see through and figure out. No power? How do you mean? Mages don't create things like a god does, they merely alter things that already exist. It frustrates me so that I can call upon a god for might and aid in battle, yet cannot bypass such a cheap, petty lie as this. I feel such an idiot. So blind I am that I cannot see through it and figure out its secret. Don't be so hard on yourself. I know hardly anything about magic other than a few basic tricks. Stick with it, and I'll see what I can find. Hmm. Okay, so now I have another knife or dagger. Urgawat Hunter's Knife. 1 to 5 damage, 2 speed, does cold damage, and plus 5 versus beasts. Traditionally used by 
Urgawat hunters. Emperor Kamal was given this by the Urgawat chieftain after he helped them fight back the Frost Trolls in the Great Troll Invasion. Enchanted to strike extra cold damage, it is also designed specifically to cut through the thick hides of the beasts that roam the tundra, allowing hunters to skin their kills faster. Ooh! He said that he didn't know what the hide was from. It's used to cut through the thick hides from the beasts that roam the tundra. Maybe it was a... a frost troll? Or something from the area where they fought the frost trolls? Anyway, it says it's used to, uh... To cut through the thick hides, so let's use this on the hide. This hide is very tough. I can't seem to cut through it. Really? Let me try the others. That's weird. It specifically says it's designed to cut through the thick hides of the beasts, but yet it doesn't cut through this hide. Wait, wait, it worked? What? I thought I was... That's gotta just need to use the right tool for the job. I... What? Uh, Othello, why are you cutting that hide up? Ah, damn it. Do you really think we'll get out of here? Yes. We have to. I wish I shared your optimism. We figured out how to do it one way, right? I refuse to believe in any circumstance that there is only one correct way to do something. There is always choice, always more than one path. Sometimes we trick ourselves into only seeing one way, but I think we can find others if we look hard enough. Keep looking, and I'll do the same. That's weird. I could have sworn I was selecting the right blade, but I guess I wasn't. Alright, so there's another dagger. And hold on. I wonder if the game is hinting to me that... Perhaps I shouldn't assume that there's only one way to get out of here? It almost seems like the game is trying to give me a hint. Hmm. Rogue's Dagger. 2 to 9 damage, 3 speed, and plus 52 detect skill. The Rogue... Uh, I don't even know what that says. The text is too blurry. The Rogue something the Malignant was well known for his exceptional ability to steal anything. Said to have vision beyond that of any mortal. When he was finally caught, trying to rob Emperor Kamal's bedroom, this knife was found on his person. It has been magically enhanced to greatly increase the wielder's ability to spot traps, secret passages, and dangers lurking in the shadows, making it the ultimate rogue's dagger. Spino's life was spared by Kamal, and he ended up joining the Companion of the Whirling Blade. Greatly increases the wielder's ability to spot traps, Secret passengers and dangers lurking in the shadows. Strange. When I hold this dagger, I seem to see everything a bit more clearly. There's something strange about that harp out instrument over there that I didn't notice before. Is there? Yes, there's definitely something behind there. Hmm. Hey, there's something hidden behind this. Another knife! How many knives are hidden in here, I wonder? Couldn't you grab the big sword or the big axe instead? I'm a bard, not a fighter, Vanny. Yeah, great. I had to get stuck in here with the one guy who ch who'd choose to mess around with the little knives instead of swinging a big axe. Come on, Vanny. What would swinging a big axe around achieve? I don't know. But if we were fighters, maybe we could smash our way out. Or if we were thieves, we'd be good at escaping from places like this. Instead, we're a priest and a bard, Othello. We're like the two least capable people at breaking out of here. Have some faith in yourself. I have no idea how to solve this, Othello. It's beyond me. You can't expect to just solve it in a few minutes. Sometimes things take time. I just wish we weren't alone in here. What do you mean? Every other time we've been stuck for the last three years, we've known each other, and there's always been someone else. If something needs figuring out or fighting needs to be done, there's always been a mage or a fighter there. We've just been sort of tagging along all these years. But now there's nobody to help us, and what can we do? That's not true. 
Nobody would have survived the undead ambush of Twelfth Valley without your holy magic. And what about the near-dead messenger that you healed that delivered the peace treaty between Yarth and Bwelden? They'd still be fighting today if you hadn't healed him right there. I... You're right, but it's just... Well, what? What else is on your mind? Well, we're... I mean... Nothing. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get annoyed. Just remember that we'll solve this. Somehow. Yeah, I guess we will. It's true, though. We've never had to deal with a problem by ourselves. True, we've always traveled with other people. I guess it's time to figure out how good a team we can be. Othello? Yeah? What is it? I... Well, that is... Nothing. I'm sorry for being negative. I'll get back to trying to solve this. We'll be out of here in no time. You'll see. Does she love me? I think she loves me. Okay. Um... What the heck is this? 10 to 14 damage, speed 4. The Arbioth Cleaver. That thing looks nasty. When the barbarian... Uh, barbarian hordes of the Arbor... Ar Ar Arbioth... I think I'm pronouncing it differently each time I say it. But anyway, when the barbarian hordes of the Arbioth Wastes invaded the city of Jernt, they were led by a mighty warrior who fought, who fought only with this knife. Despite its small size, it is exceptionally well-crafted, strong and sharp, easily as damaging as a full-sized greatsword, and easily carved through the plate armor worn by the guards. When Emperor Kamal met the warrior in combat in the city streets, he... is that a... Is that an H? I think it's supposed to be an H. He failed the Barbarian and claimed this powerful blade as his prize. Okay, so it's extremely powerful. Um... Chop the chest open? Gotcha! This little dagger popped that lock right open. Sweet! And inside is... another dagger. How surprising! I wonder if that one will help us get out. Hmm. Hang on a minute. Hey? Have you figured something out? See the spacing on those runes? I think if I laid down, I could probably touch both of them at the same time. That way, you could get out, and then only one of us would be trapped inside. And then you could go and get help or something. Othello, the nearest village is two weeks' travel away. By the time I got back, you'd be dead. Hmm. True. But maybe I'd find a way out anyway. I am sure I can think of something. What's the point in getting me out if you're going to escape anyway? Well... That way, if I don't figure it out, one of us still survives. Oh, I see how it is. You do? Yeah, I do. You obviously want me out of here. What? Well, isn't that what you want? Do you dislike me, Othello? I just offered to get you out of here. You clearly want me out of here. You want to be left alone, don't you? I... I'm not sure I understand. Three years we've been traveling together, and the one time we're stuck somewhere together without anyone else around, you want me gone. If you didn't like me, I wish you'd have told me that at the start, and I would have just left, if that would have made you feel better. What do you mean? I see the way you treat other ladies when we're in towns, when you're telling your grand tales by the tavern fires, and they flock around you, flirting and giggling. You're very good with ladies, aren't you? I noticed you sneaking off with them, blushing and whispering. Ladies love your charisma, your grand tales. You're so good at paying them compliments. You should be a professional flirt, you know that? 
They just melt when you're around. What has this got to do with anything? Ah, damn it, I skipped it. You're a priestess, Vanny. Even I'm not cheeky enough to flirt with a cleric. So that's it, is it? If I was any plain old wench at a bar, you'd be quite happy to flirt with me? No, it's not like that. You're better than some wench in a bar. You've got skill and talent. You're a fine companion to travel with. As long as it doesn't go any further, right? Vanny, are you... Do you... I like you, Othello. I love the way you talk, the way you tell tales, and the way you can romanticize even the smallest tale. And I see you taking those girls away, and I know where you're going and what you're doing, and it makes me jealous, jealous, and I hate it. I hate that I am jealous of those stupid pretty girls who will never do anything great or special, and here I am, devoted and loyal, and I can't have you. It makes me so ashamed, ashamed of myself for being distracted from my faith and my devotion for a charming bard, ashamed that I could even think about doing what you do with the wenches behind taverns. The thoughts make me feel weak, dirty, and sickened of myself, and that just makes me want it more. Why can't I be that girl with you in the middle of the night? Why did I have to dedicate myself to a cause that stops me from having that? And why do we even want something so filthy, so vulgar, so commonplace, and every day is so far from being special that everyone else can have it anyway? Why can't you just walk across this accursed room and kiss me and stop me from saying all these stupid words that I hate myself for even thinking? <sighs> Never mind. Forget it. I will try to focus on this damn barrier and get us out of this stupid room. Do you really want me to kiss you? Yes. No. I don't know. I do and I don't. I don't even want to talk about it. Just kiss me or forget about it, okay? Okay. Right. So, kiss you. Right. Well? Well, I can't do it now. The moment's gone. There's no romance, no style. What? What are you going on about? There has to be drama. You have to you have to catch the moment. The moment was there and I missed it. And now I have to wait for the next one. The moment. I have no idea what you're saying. Look, it's about timing, okay? You can't just waltz on up and push your lips together and be satisfied. Why not? Isn't that what kissing is? Yes, but to make a memorable moment, you have to catch that catch that moment. Timing is of the essence. There will be another moment, and it will be perfect. And this time, I will, I will be watching for it. You'll see. If we're going to do this, we have to do it properly. You know how I said that you're good with women? Yes, I remember. What of it? I take it all back. I just wanted a kiss, damn it. But it will happen, and it will be so much better if we wait for that special moment. <sighs> if you say so. Oh, I'm going to find the perfect moment. Sometime. Okay. What the heck can I do? Okay, Chaotic Shard. Damage 1 to 3, Speed 2, Special. Changes lawful and neutral aligned people to Chaotic. Carved from a shard of metal from the very Plane of Chaos, this dagger was wielded by the War Mage Corlin the Raven. Able to change one's perceptions, he would sneak his way through towns, cutting people he wished to recruit in their sleep. So that when they awoke, they would be more willing to join him. When he was eventually tracked down and killed by Emperor Kamal for his crimes in the province Jirtro, this dagger was taken by the Emperor so that none might benefit from its magic in such a way again. Hmm. So it... If you cut someone, it changes them from a lawful and neutral to chaotic. Interesting. What could I do with that?
Um... What if I use it on myself? What if I cut myself? I'm not sure if, he, if it would be a good thing if I was chaotic, but what the hell? Oops. Oh, can I... Oh, I guess I can't... Or can I do this? Right, if I cut myself with the dagger, it will change my alignment to chaotic. Right, so I just gotta cut myself. Just a little cut. Ah, I can't do this. What's wrong with me? It's just a little cut. Something wrong? Yeah, look, uh, would you be able to help me with this? What is it you need? Well, I... Could you just cut me with this dagger? What? What the hell, Othello? Look, it's to help us get out of here, okay? Are you feeling alright? Vanny, please, just a little cut. Just a nick. I can't believe you actually want me to do this. Oh, sorry. Did I cut too deep? Cut me again, woman. <laughs> what? Why? It feels good. The pain. Gods. I never thought I'd enjoy pain this much. It's ecstatic. Please, Vanny. Please give me more. Uh... No, I did what you asked to help you. I'm not cutting you again just because you think you'll enjoy it. Oh, Vanny, please. Bite me, cut me, chew on my ears, and pull my hair. <laughs> Uh, step on my fingers and make me beg for more. I've never felt so damn alive. Othello, what's going on? Has something happened? Why did you want me to cut you? The, the dagger changes people. It makes them more accepting of chaos. I have to say, I never thought I'd be like this, though. All of a sudden, I feel so adventurous and uninhibited. You did what? You literally used the dagger to change your mind, your soul? You're mad! No, 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 it's not like that. I did it so we could get out of here, and I'll show you. It's okay, really. I'm still the same person. I just... I've had my perspective change a little, that's all. And this is supposed to get us out of here? Yes, look. I'll show you. Whoops. Right. Apparently he knows what to do now that he's chaotic, but I don't. What does that allow me to do? I don't know, let's just use a bunch of stuff. I have nothing to sacrifice, and I always found that sort of thing a little over the top myself. Any deity that demands a sacrifice will probably also demand self-sacrifice sooner or later, in my opinion. These mirrors are virtually unbreakable. I certainly wouldn't be able to damage it with this little knife. Oh, I still have the knife in my, in my hand. There we go. Other than holding the Jewel of Kamal and a use... In Forgotten Rituals, this doesn't have any real use to me. The mirror is, for our purposes, useless. No, these flowers are meant to be extinct. Even if I could, even if it could help me out of here, there's no way I'd ruin a living specimen to escape. Despite its enormous historical significance, this won't help us escape from here. Maybe I'll have a better look at it once we know how to get, get out. Oh wait, is that going to allow me to wield this sword? That's slightly too big for me to wield. The man who it was made for was seven feet tall. It's most definitely out of my league. What about the axe? That's not really my kind of weapon. In, as impressive as a mighty warrior would look hacking a wall down with an axe, I'm not mighty nor a warrior. I just look foolish trying to swing that thing around, and I'd rather be stuck in here than lose an ounce of my style. Yeah, don't lose that swag, bard. Ho ho, yes, if only. Sadly, I could never pull back the bowstring on that thing. Still, if someone pulled it back for me, I would love to have a shot with that. What a machine. Hmm. I can't reach it, and if I could, I don't really know what I'd do with it. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm chaotic. What does that mean I can do? Is that now the moment? How are you going? Still haven't disabled this barrier. Well, stick with it. No, I don't think that's the moment. Oh, my fingers went numb for a second there. Hmm. I guess I could try to open it for her, but what's the point? I still need to get out myself. No, it's really just for decoration. Even the blades are made out of useless pewter. Oh no, I tried playing pan flutes as a child. Let's just say the wind instruments aren't for me. What about the trident? I... I don't actually think tridents are useful as weapons. I would feel very brave or heroic waving a glorified pitchfork around. Um, I think I meant to say I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel very brave or heroic waving a glorified pitchfork around. I need the light in here, and best to leave it alone, in case I break it. I don't think I could reach it, and I'm not sure what I'd do with it anyway. Ugh, <sighs> a gaunt shell. I hate the Z. Ah, damn it, I skipped it. Just thinking about the slimy creatures that used to live in there makes me feel ill. No way I'm picking that up. And the sort of magic that these hold isn't going to be effective in getting rid of the barrier, sadly. Okay, so what if I cut her with a chaotic dagger? No, that would be rather rude. Yes, it would. I guess I'll try the runes? Hmm. No, I can't lay across it, and I wouldn't want to anyway. Alright, how do I get out of here? I mean, I don't have a new blade, so what can I do now that I'm chaotic? Well, let's just try to use everything. Already did that. As beautiful a painting as it is, it doesn't have any practical application, and won't get us out of here. No, already took the dagger from behind that. Already tried the axe, already tried the shell, already tried the crystal globe, dreamcatcher, pan flute, painting. Uh, yeah, same thing. Just for decoration. Vase. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece for sure. Pity it won't help us get out of here. If there was someone nearby whose attention I could attract with the horn, then I'd use it. Sadly, this piece is completely deserted. Or, this place is completely deserted. It's far too big for me and is designed purely for training war falcons. I'll just leave it where it is. Carrying that heavy gear around would be useless. There's no machinery in here that I could use it in anyway. Already got the dagger from behind. Okay, I think I've clicked on everything. So, what do I do? Oh wait, there's a dagger here. This is now mine. Oh! Okay. A dagger of Dispelling. Ooh, maybe it could dispel the barrier. Two to six, one speed, dispel magic. Before he set off to challenge the mighty sorcerer Tyal, Emperor Kamal was given this by his wife to aid him in the battle. It proved instrumental in his victory. Kamal managed to break free of every magical curse and trap that and trap that was cast upon him by Tyal with the aid of the dagger, and then used it to strike the sorcerer down. After seeing how the dagger saved his life, he carried it with him at all times until his death. Oh, well, let's see if he can dispel this. Come on. Bingo! You did it! Great! I knew we'd be able to get rid of this barrier. Come on, Vanny. Let's get out of here. Aren't you going to take some of these things with you? 
You know, I think I've decided that it is time to make my own story, rather than tell everyone else's for a change. But there's so much history in here. And we have so many opportunities to make our own stories. You haven't forgotten about the other thing, have you? What do you mean? About what we... talked about before? Oh, you mean you and I? Yes, you said that you'd kiss me. <laughs> Why stop at just kissing? I guess I'm still being affected by the chaoticness. I would never forget, dear Vanny. Such a sweet man. No wonder I've grown to love him. Heart, or less than three, was... Oh, I... Oh, it's going. Music and testing device by... Cube, oh god, it's going fast. Font by Craig Kroger. Made for the May 2011 MAGS competition. Special thanks to... etc. etc. Okay. <laughs> I wonder if you can actually affect what happens there at the end by doing something differently. Okay, and the game just closed. Let me get my post-game stretch in. <sighs> that was a wonderful game. As always, wonderful art, and music, and, and well, wonderful everything. I mean, I've come to expect a good art from Ben Chandler, because, well, he's a good artist, but now I've come to expect a good writing, because he's also a very good writer. I mean, let's just, let me just recap what happened there. That was an adventure game set in a single room. One room, and my playthrough lasted about 50 minutes. 50 minutes inside of one room. That's how detailed it was. And for barely any of that was I, you know, just going over the same thing stuck. Most of that time was spent actually discovering new things and reading the descriptions and learning about the things around me. So it's not like it's, you know, it's not like it just forces you to repeat things again and again, and that's why it's so long. Almost all of that was experiencing new content in the game, and it's all set in one room, and it was almost 50 freaking minutes. To pack so much detail into this one room, and also making it make it engaging at the same time, is incredible. I mean, bravo. Excellent. Just just packed full of these artifacts that were interesting to read about. Just little snippets from history. And then, of course, there's the drama part of it, which was really interesting. Interesting things happen when people are stuck in a room together. And it was a, it was a nice, sweet little story. I wonder when the moment is going to be. Anyway, that was uh, my playthrough of Less Than 3, or Heart, or Left Arrow 3, depending on how you want to read it. And it was freaking wonderful. So I hope you enjoyed, and I will probably be back soon with more Ben Chandler games.